Last time on Brian's Mobile One. Well, it wasn't the battery terminals because <laughs> we, blew, we blew the fuse again. Brian's Mobile One. Hey guys, I'm really excited about this video and I'm excited to collaborate with Rodney Norman. He's done a, been a DIY mechanic for a long time. His brother is actually a mechanic from uh, North Carolina. He's a race mechanic. Uh, this is video two in a multi-series. We did video one where we showed about doing battery cables and how to sure things up so that you have uh, better contact. You're not spiking, you're not intermittent, you're not doing weird signal stuff that can mess up the electronics. We're diagnosing in this video, why is Fuse 26 blowing? We blew the fuse again. Fuse 26 gets its power from the 30 amp slow blow fuse via the ASD or auto shut down relay, which is responsible for turning on or turning off uh, fuel injection signal and spark signal dependent on crankshaft signal. So it's tied into the computer every which way. I don't even have to make believe it's all right here. It's a mess. Uh, so <laughs> it's Daimler Chrysler period. So safety is more important than simplicity by far for them. They've been sued a whole bunch of times. What I am going to get into is how you have tools at your disposal. Stuff like this. These are a lot more expensive than these. They're like 140 bucks instead of 65. Uh, but you can send power and ground depending on this switch. I'm sending ground. I'm sending power. And when you probe ground, notice that I'm not touching the button anymore. You hear that Morse code thing? You're going to hear that later in this video. But if I have good contact, a solid good connection, it's just straight tone and it's just a zero. We'll turn off the irritating sound and you can see it's just a zero. It's not 0 0.1. Hardest part for me uh, when diagnosing things in electrical stuff is the intermittent nature of it. Um, if something's not all the way failed, it just only does it sometimes, it can be affected because electron flow is affected by temperature, um, conductivity is affected by uh, air moisture or being wet or contaminants in the moisture. Pure water doesn't conduct electricity, but if you add a little salt to it, then it does. If you have minerals or road debris, dust, any of that kind of stuff in the water, totally can conduct. And it, it's semiconductor. Uh, so you can be dealing with all of these different unknowns that only work during certain times. So one of the fortunate things is uh, when we were able to stabilize in the last video by getting the battery cables stable good connection that helps make it easier for us to diagnose. If you've got a bunch of resistance in the positive cable and an intermittent connection in the negative cable that can cause all kinds of stuff that's intermittent of itself. You've got capacitors, resistors, and all kinds of different diodes and whatnot. And it'll make that read different. So if you find a particular signature or ground where there isn't supposed to be, you can follow it by that signature. Say you've got a cannon plug and a whole bunch of different pins on it, you can scroll through it. But if you're not careful when you're probing, you can get that da -da 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 -da, you know morse code kind of thing where there isn't so you want to hold it i use alligator clips clip onto it and that way it holds it good so there's a little tip for you to use in your diagnostic arsenal in the last video i told you that i would show you my shirt it says emotional support human uh, this is one of my two favorite shirts that rodney has in his merch uh, he hooked me up with a calendar and a shirt the guy's freaking genius <laughs> you know in terms of comedy acting prowess like all that kind of stuff he uses the element of surprise in a way that he teaches from a place of humility so that you don't have your guard up and he reminds you of things that you already know but maybe forget because you're distracted by a tyrannical government or who knows what it's hard to say there's a lot of distracting things in the world uh, but you see him waving on the front and then you look at the back surprise there's his back <laughs> Just funny stuff like that. Comedy, laughter, it's good medicine. Uh, automotive diagnostics, it can require a lot of stubbornness. There's a good side of stubbornness and there's a bad side of stubbornness. Earlier I said that there's, uh, this is one of my two favorite shirts. The other one that I really like that he has, it says, you know, you hear in the media toxic masculinity and the media is toxic. Our court system is toxic. Our prison system is toxic. Uh, war is toxic. There's all these things that men are exposed to that are toxic. But you know what his shirt says? It's a parody of that. Intoxicating masculinity. As in just like unbelievably. 
you know, like the way that romance is intoxicating. Fun time, like I freaking love the way he took something that is so wrong and so misattributed. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it just like turns it around. So it's like masculinity is intoxicating and amazing, wonderful. He's got some funny stuff. You should check it out. Funny and insightful and healthy and laughter's good medicine kind of stuff. So without further ado, let's get into this repair. Let's track this down and see what the deal is. Okay. So before I got real excited when I got the vehicle home and. Uh, Got it to start by just uh, changing out the, the fuse. And I thought, oh, hey, good for me. I solved the problem. I'm the smartest man in the entire world. But it soon uh, stopped working again. And the fuse blew again. So I thought, well, maybe it was just a bad fuse. So I changed out the fuse, and then it, that one blew. And then I realized, uh-oh, I'm not as smart as I thought I was. So uh, obviously there was more of a problem. That that was a symptom to a problem wasn't my actual problem, but it gave me uh, it gave us a good start, place to start. So uh, so we had that fuse, and this was for the fuel injectors, and it was right here. And uh, so we knew the problem was somewhere uh, in there. So. Uh, the, these fuses, uh, uh, the way these work is that you have this fuse that blows for the first time to indicate, hey, there is a problem here, fella, you need to, or miss fella, whatever you might be. Um, hey, there is a problem here. And so we tracked it to the, our next issue is, of course, is the, uh, the, the slow, okay, here's the number, the slow blow fuse. So, uh, so the blow by blow on the slow blow was that uh, we put in a fuse, we put in this fuse. Now you might sit there and go, hey, that looks just like a normal fuse. But you would uh, be wrong, because this is made by uh, the communist Chinese slave factory workers uh, who are not necessarily uh, focused on uh, detail. And so they make the fuse a little bit too strong in fact, they don't even put the real number. They just sort of put it on there with the with a, a invisible ink or something. It doesn't really show up. And what happens is we put this one in there, and it wouldn't blow. And so you think, oh, what the hell? That fuse doesn't blow. I'm I'm doing great. But you would be wrong because when you put the fuse, it's too big. Uh, if it's a 15 and you put a 25, which is basically what this is probably is, um, uh, it won't pop. And you go, oh, okay, well that solves my problem. But no, you actually create a bigger problem. Because that caused the slow blow fuse uh, to pop. Because uh, its job is to keep uh, power going to places it's not supposed to go to. Okay, so it blows. So now we have that one blown, and we have this one blown. And you say, hey, that's a problem. But no, it's not a problem. It's actually a pretty good thing, because they're doing their job. They're saying, hey, we don't want you to have even more uh, issues that cost you extraordinary large amounts of money. And so from there, we were able to track the problem into the... Uh, the PCM. It has a very technical name, but it's just, it, most people just say it's the computer. Okay, so we tracked it to uh, this connection right here. We put our fuse back in here. And this is a blown fuse, so we're only on one leg of it. Yep. So that it's uh, isolated. So we put it in the uh, load side. Whatever the thing that you're trying to protect, it gives you just a reading on that side. And then we're going to connect this and you'll hear irritating uh, sound. Okay, now we disconnect it. Okay, so that means that somewhere within this system is our problem. So we got something grounding that's not supposed to be grounding, and grounding, the shimmy grounding, is means that your positive uh, is touching the ground and grounding out, so the positive isn't being so positive because now it's grounding out and becoming a negative. 
With all the advancements in technology and our understanding of science and the world around us, when it comes to electricity, it's still, we have no idea what it actually is. And so it's the easiest way to explain what electricity is, is, uh, well, it's a magical force that we like to call uh, elect electrical uh, pixies. And so think of uh, electrical pixies as uh, positive creatures that love to do positive things. But when somebody negative comes along, it really bums them out. And then they uh, catch into flames and um, uh, uh, burn to the ground. So I'd like to demonstrate. So here's our pixies, our positive, and they're dancing around, have positive, having a glorious time. Well, we're so happy. And then uh, here comes song Negative Nelly. Uh, shows up at the party and starts to bum everybody out. And as you can see, uh, uh, all the anger and frustration that the pixies have been holding up uh, uh, effervesces uh, into the universe and creates negativity. And that's why you should never connect your uh, negative and positive. In fact, if you ever go, hey, how do welders work? Well, that's what they do. Is they take the negative and positive and put it together and uh, create lots of uh, menacing havoc. So that's why you should, uh, don't let those uh, touch or you'll have a lot of uh, complications to your otherwise awesome day. So now we figured out where our problem was. We had to follow the, the wires. And so we come, we've, we've taken from here, and now we're over into this harness here. We know that this is causing our problem. So it's one of these pins in here is the, is the circuit. We know that our problem is this one because of the signature there. It's the same number that we were getting over uh, in here. So we know this is the circuit that we're having the problem with. So we follow this one. And after uh, much consternation and uh, disappointment, eventually we come to this thing and voila, it stops working. Which indicates that this is our problem. And this, well, they've discontinued making it, which is very nice. And so we have to go find somebody who makes it. Uh, so we're either going to go to a junkyard or we might have to purchase apart from uh, the Chinese communist slave uh, camps. But either way, we'll, we'll figure it out. So at this point in time, you might be thinking, wow, these guys are the smartest people in the world. They figured that out so fast. And you would be wrong. Because what we had to do was to check uh, every possibility of what was causing the problem. And so we've uh, dismantled the This, this is a, a fancy system that they came up with because someone's like, hey, I really hate spark plug wires. Wish we could just do it all one big huge block. And so we have this they call is a coil pack. Goes in the spark plug stick in there. So we took this off because uh, we was having to do something with that. And then we, we disconnected all the fuel injectors. Then all those connections right there. See if that was it. And then after we uh, did all that, and then we, we went to lunch, a really delicious uh, uh, burger, and then thought about it, and then, and then came back, and then we just started taking more stuff apart. And then eventually we were able to isolate it to, of course, this uh, capacitor. You might be sitting there going, hey, I don't even know what a capacitor is. Well, a capacitor is a little thing, and it like, uh, it's like, think of it like it's like a little tiny uh, booster battery. It's like a little waiting room for a few just pixies. It's just a handful of pixies kind of hanging out in the green room waiting for the showtime to start. And then when it's time for showtime, they come running out going, okay, let's have a party. And and that's uh, where our problem is. is uh, uh, the When the door opens for going to showtime, instead of going on the stage, um, they get kicked out of the, the theater in the back and they get thrown in a dumpster and then they're going, hey, what the hell is going on here? So now we're just going to put everything back together and hope we're right, or, or we're going to have to start over again. But that's the joys of uh, 
troubleshooting. We've taken everything that we took apart and we put it back together. So we've reconnected our fuel injectors. We put back on our coil pack. Uh, we got uh, the new fuses. So we have the, the fuse replaced for the fuel injectors. We've got the uh, ASD uh, slow, uh, slow blow fuse replaced. And uh, our relay for the ASD system uh, is in, in, in uh, its appropriate uh, hidey hole. And then, of course, we've got our tank back together. Our PCM is all tightened up and put in place. And so we're ready to uh, start it back up and get out on the road. Or, or we have to start all over. And we're about to find out. Join us on our journey. Okay, so here's the moment of truth. It actually sounds better than before, too, so... This is good. I took it for a test run and it, uh, it ran beautifully even across uh, bumpy roads. Uh, I, I drove at an excessive amount of speed just to see what would happen and uh, it uh, did a beautiful job. So uh, turns out uh, just unplugging stuff worked. Well the purpose of that capacitor is uh, to keep the uh, the frequency is coming off of the engine to not interfere with the frequency for the radio stations. You know, so that because they, they come in and they start dancing together and they cancel each other out and makes everything uh, horrible to listen to. And so uh, we're going to test the radio. I make 200 to 300 bucks. Wow, that's serious extra cash. I'm downloading the free Dead Upside app now. Download the free. So the radio uh, works uh, perfect, perfectly well. So it's not, it's not great, but it's never great. But, you know, it's interference enough to uh, remind you that, well, life is not perfect, and some things aren't always all that clear, and that's okay. Bonus footage at the end. So a lot of people have been asking me, say, hey, I feel, I feel overwhelmed, and uh, I'm just tired of everything, and I just uh, want... Want to end? Well, I'd just like to point out that once you finally uh, just give up on everything, you are in the perfect position uh, to just really like to start making uh, some uh, better choices. Because uh, once you realize that nothing really all that matters and you're willing to give it everything up, then you realize that nothing you're really holding on to is all that important. And then you start thinking about the things that really are important. Then you realize all the stuff that you were upset about isn't all that important. And then you can just start focusing on good stuff that is kind of is important and stuff. So, so what I'm trying to say is, uh, when you finally decide to give up, that's the best time to get on with it and start making some changes and be happy. So be happy.